MSG. You may think it's only an ingredient in Asian food, but you're wrong. It's everywhere. From restaurants to your grocery to your kids' school cafeterias, even your baby's formula. Monosodium glutamate is a flavor enhancer that's been big in the U.S. since the 50s. It's supposed to make your food taste better, but research shows MSG is making us fat. It's very difficult to exercise off. It's very difficult to uh, diet off. Uh, and these uh, infant animals that become obese tend to become what we refer to as couch potatoes. Dr. Russell Blaylock has studied these common flavor enhancers that many experts believe are hazardous to your health. He calls them excitotoxins, the taste that kills. An excitotoxin is a big word for any substance like MSG that overexcites cells to the point of damage, acting as a toxin, hence the term excitotoxin, a form of poison. The FDA considers MSG safe, but numerous scientists have found that glutamate in the diet can cause a range of problems in animals, including obesity. These foods, particularly in a child, uh, is certainly of the dose equal to what you're seeing in animals. Now, the thing that's peculiar about the child, they're uh, four times more sensitive than an adult. Pound for pound. Pound for pound. So babies in the womb and young children up to about age three are the most threatened. That means expectant mothers may need to be mindful of their diets. And when the babies are born, moms may want to watch out for formula. Nearly all formulas contain processed milk or soy protein. Because of the processing, these proteins are broken down into MSG and related excitotoxins. The other curious thing about exposing animals to MSG early in life is they prefer sweet foods foods with sugar in it, carbohydrate foods, and they stay away from the foods that are healthier. And that can contribute to obesity throughout life and can make it almost impossible to lose weight. Your diet could be your brain's biggest enemy. Why? Consider this. Could the yogurt Granny eats send her prematurely into Alzheimer's? Could your baby's diet be putting the child on a path toward attention deficit disorder? Or could your daily soup slam you with migraines? Dr. Russell Blaylock says all those outcomes are possible because of the flavor enhancer known as MSG. All of those afflictions happen to lab animals that consume monosodium glutamate, and humans are much more sensitive, especially when consuming it over a lifetime. Instead of just giving a few doses early in life, we give it throughout the entire life of the animal. When we do that, we see dramatic damage to that animal's brain not just to the, the obesity centers, but to centers that control memory, learning, uh, social interaction, social control. And pain. Terry Strauss was about 10 when the headaches began. Well, I started having severe migraine headaches. Um, the pain was just unbearable. There were many, many days I would come home from school, nauseous, uh, sick, um, I would go straight to bed and just stay there until the next morning. That trauma continued through his teen years, with doctors suggesting he'd grow out of it. He didn't. Eventually, they put him on a drug. He could work, but it was far from a normal life. Things began to change when he saw a news program on MSG causing migraines. He began avoiding anything he knew might contain MSG. I noticed within a month that, that the headaches had, had subsided, that they, they were not there, they were not as severe when I did get them later. And um, My wife was, was amazed. She said, you were right. She said, we need to continue this. Headache specialist Dr. David Buchholz is certain MSG causes migraines for literally millions of people. That's exactly right. It's yeah. an excitotoxin and it turns on this headache me mechanism and makes you hurt like heck. An excitotoxin is any substance that overexcites cells to the point of damage, acting as a toxin. And there may be more to this public poison. MSG can directly worsen autism, attention deficit disorder, and hyperactivity. MSG can cause the brain to be miswired, especially in the womb in the first few years of life. That damage to brain connections can mess up nearly any aspect of brain function from the control of hormones to behavior and intelligence. That's what happens with infant mice. After being fed MSG, they show no signs of mental damage until they're older and begin to fail at complex tasks. Bluntly put, they become stupid. And humans are five times more sensitive to MSG than mice. Infants, even more so. 
Blaylock believes the entire education system suffers as a result, even the ability of students to get along with each other. But what about MSG's impact on brain afflictions in older adults? Blaylock says MSG may only be a contributing factor in starting brain diseases, but it definitely can make major neurological afflictions worse. Alzheimer's disease, ALS, sometimes called Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, strokes, Parkinson's disease, they all involve excitotoxins doing harm. Blaylock has written the only book on excitotoxins for the general public. He's updated that information in a book on health and nutrition secrets. He says the key is staying away from MSG. But that's not as easy as it sounds. It's in all sorts of commercially processed food products that wouldn't taste like much if they didn't have this flavor enhancer added to them. Mm -hmm. And it's not always labeled as MSG or monosodium glutamate. It's labeled as hydrolyzed protein or natural flavors, and you'd never suspect it. But Strauss does suspect it. He and his wife have learned the names that hide MSG. Learning how to do the grocery shopping, reading labels, knowing what types of food to, to choose, what types of food not to choose. Of course, any ingredient with the word glutamate. Plus, aspartame, autolyzed yeast, broth, caseinate, hydrolyzed proteins such as hydrolyzed soy. And for the public, Blaylock says there's a simple truth. Avoiding MSG could be the best thing you'll ever do for your brain. And he adds, don't be surprised when medical organizations and government agencies defend MSG as safe. He says they simply don't understand the complex vulnerability of the brain. Obrok i tako dalje. To je taj blagi nedostatak. Kao i sve tehnologije, i prehrambena, farmaceutska tehnologija. Dete ne može da pije sirup, mi moramo da dodamo veštačku aromu, jagode. Ili hoću voćni čaj sa šumskim. To on ima veštačku aromu. Većina čajeva. Ja sam slučajno naveo. Međutim, imamo spektar slatkiša koji imaju veštačke arome. Suština je sledeća. Da naš organizam Tu veštačku aromu ne može da preradi. Naša će mokreća mirisati na sok, na čaj, na slatkiš, upravo onaj koji smo. Ili će mnogo više energije biti utrošeno da bi jetra mogla sa njim da izađe na kraj. Da li je to farmaceutskog, prehambenog ili inog porekla, bilo koji miris, pazite, aromu, kupanje šamponom ne preporučuje. Možemo prati kosu, ali nemojte površinski aktivnim sredstvima mirišljave kade neke soli koje imaju veštačke boje. Molim vas, kupamo se u kadi sa nekom solju koja ima veštačku boju. Ili veštačka romu. Veštačka boja je mnogo opasnija i veštačka boja je jesu azotna jedinjenja, pazite, i ona nas navlači. I mi zapravo šta naši neurotransmiteri postaju? Oni postaju zavisni od tih tihih droga. Kada krenemo sa slatkišem, x neću pominjati, Ne mogu uzeti jednu kockicu ili jedno parče, ja ću pojesti 100 grama. Ništa vi ne pričate. Zašto? Zato što je ta sprega, veza. I kad se očisti organizam, onda se prepoznaju arome u fazi žvakanja. Mi se oduševljavamo sami sobom, jao što je to dobro, kao što je, na primjer, kruška ima svoju specifičnu aromu, je li tako? I mi ćemo na taj način, ja sad da ne pominje veštačka pića sa aromama, kruške, dunje i tako dalje. Koriste se svuda. Goran je pomenuo, mi koristimo i u odeći i u obuć. Svi proizvodi imaju arome. I zapravo mi moramo da se pazimo njihovo kumulantivnog dejstva. Da ne budemo stalno zavisni od velike količine veštačkih boja i aroma. Zašto ne koristiti? Zašto nekada i ne preterati? To je život. To je znači sposobnost organizma da posle nedelju dana dođe u ravnotežu. I zapravo to preterivanje, naravno sa ekstremnim drogama, cigaretama, drogama ne bih pričao, tetrahidrokanabiolu i tako dalje, ali ove latentne tihe droge o kojima sam stalno pričao, ono su mnogo opasnije. Zašto? Zato što mi dete tu damo da se ono igra sa slanim grickalicama, a one imaju mononatrium glutaminata, E621. On je fantastičan pojačivač arome. 
i koristi su mesnoj tehnologiji, tehnologiji proizvoda su komesnati i drugih sireva i tako dalje i on nije tako opasan ako je u malim količinama. Ali ako mi preko sluzo kože ustiju uzimamo dodatak, slani dodatak sa povrćem, mi smo ga nazivali začin, da ne bi pomenuo o tradicionalni naziv, trgovinski, ne njega, bilo koji, koji sadržimo ono natrijem glutamina, on je za čorba stajela. On nije zato da se meso time salamuri pa da ide na skar, on će stvoriti više kancerogenih jedinjanja nego li samo meso. Ili će se upržiti. Znači on je stvoren za čorbasta, za vodene rastvore. Ali ako ga mi uzmemo preko jezika, uzmemo slane grickalice, čipseve, kekse neke slane i tako dalje, bilo ko porekla da su biljnog ili sa nekim komponentama životinskog porekla, masnoćama ili proteinima, sve jedno je. Te veštačke arome će direktno preko sluzu koše ući u krv, kao amonijum i on. I onda će spasti imunitet. Mi ćemo dete odvesti ko lekara, konstatujem da ćemo zapaljenje grla, mi ćemo njemu antibiotike. I onda će se bakar iz srca povući uz globove. Dobit će zapaljenje z globove i konstatujem da ćemo možda slabljenje srčanog mišića, možda preko nekog naziva medicinskog, najmanje bitno da li će to biti šum na srcu ili ne, Suština je da su razvijene civilizacije pre 30 i 40 godina dokazale da prevelika količina mononatrium glutaminata, slani grickalica i celog spektra aroma veštočke vanile, pazice etil vanilina na primjer, pavlake u slatkim proizvodima i tekako mogu pogubno delovati na naš organizam.